Good morning and welcome back to the Elevator Clinics. I'm Glenn Caruso, head football coach at St. Thomas and happy to have Brady Walls on today. Uh, Elevator Clinics, uh, you guys know the deal by now. This is the third one, trying to get people who are passionate about football and what we do and get you a lot of information in a short period of time. So five minutes, five questions, no time to waste. And uh, we're on today with, like I said, Brady Walls, who is uh, the host and the, the founder of uh, Run the Power podcast and also high school coach in Iowa and spent a lot of time down south. Brady, happy to have you on. Great to be here, coach. I'm excited. Well, let's get at it. Um, I got to start with this. Obviously, the word power comes up all the time that we, we discuss uh, you and what you do. Why run the power? <clears throat> we kind of decided, I know uh, Coach Harper and myself, kind of the, the co-creators, that you know, power has always been our, our favorite play. Uh, I was introduced to it early on, you know, kind of studying North Dakota State from my days growing up in, in South Dakota, you know, and, and being able to run the football has always kind of been synonymous. So uh, run the power was something we were both passionate about. And, and honestly, we were going to get our start with our podcast, you know, really kind of hitting home with offensive line play, uh, being physical up front. And, uh, you know, anytime we got into tough situations, usually, you know, your goal line situations, your third and ones, your fourth and ones, it was always something where you'd ask and, and guys were like, hey, let's run the power. Even our, our kids would say the same thing. So run the power, RTP kind of became synonymous with, you know, who we are, what we do. We're, we're simple dudes uh, and we love physical football and we love to see teams that, that, do, uh, that do smash a little bit in those situations. Well, no question. It's definitely one of those visceral plays. I think to your point, a lot of people really feel good about it if they have it in their system and you know truth be told you spent a lot of years uh coordinating offenses at huge and very good schools down in Oklahoma and I love that it's still your your mantra even though you're coaching wide receivers but I love that you stuck with it so with that play um take us through what is your favorite way to run it whether it's formationally or maybe against a surface but if you had your druthers and you can run it one way the whole game what would be the way you'd pick to run power we're, we're big, uh, you know, eight gap power teams. So anything where we can run it super tight. So I, I think, you know, a lot of teams like the, the strong power and putting extra wings and putting extra body. I, I prefer to run it weak. So to run it to a weak surface and whether you're kicking with, you know, an H back, a true fullback, uh, an inline tight end, that's always kind of been my favorite. But, um, the Throughout the years, all the runs that we've tend to, to look at, and, and I kind of got this from Coach Alexander when we were at Jenks together, but our most efficient runs were generally ones that we were running away from the strength of the formation. So finding ways to run back weak. So uh, I would say my, my all-time favorite way to run it, 21 personnel slot and running it to the weak side. Uh, I saw a lot of uh, LaDainian Tomlinson and the San Diego Chargers running that back in the day. So, you know, right slot, 19 weak was always, or not 19, uh, 17 weak was always my favorite way to run it. That's awesome. And, and you know what, I'm still looking, looking forward to the day where someone morphs the RPOs into the under center eye formation weak side run game to, to take care of that overhang player. But the under, the under center RPOs is a bit of an oxymoron. It's tough to do. Um, coach, how about when, and you don't have to give specifics unless it's someone who you don't play anymore, but the best way that you've seen power defended against you when you were coaching, what was that? I would say, you know, and maybe not necessarily, you know, the, the guys that had defended us, but the guys who, who made it hard to move the point in a gap. So you'd see some people who would, you know, be hard plug in a gap. You know, they'd even crawl in a gap, just, just finding ways to, to really hold that point and not let you uh, move people. Um, I think if you're blocking it kind of the old school way where, you know, you're, you're vertical double team in a three, you're, you're seeing a lot of people who can gap cancel by, you know, wiping across the center's face. And I, and I think that's one of, one of the reasons why, you know, you kind of have those built-in answers to some of these things that, that, uh, that teams try to do. But I think, you know, being able to wipe across the center's face, putting a body in a gap, especially on that play side, you know, a gap, and then, you know, maybe kind of slow playing that backside linebacker. To me, that, that could give you a lot of trouble. But, you know, hopefully you've seen enough of that to where you, you could develop some answers. Now, you've done a lot of interviews, I mean, tons of them, and anyone who's a football junkie who's kind of in the underground world of, of finding podcasts such as yours and other sources to gain information knows about all the interviews you've done. What has been your favorite interview, whether it's the favorite interview based on topic or the favorite person to interview and why? Ha, that's a tough one. You know, we've done, we've done about 200 and some of them now. Um, I would say when we first started off, 
uh, in year one and, and we got LaCharles Bentley to come on, I would say that was the most nervous that, that Harper and I both were. I mean, I was, my heart was beating pretty good, you know, and, and we'd only been a, a few, you know, kind of interviews in. So we're still kind of figuring out all the, the logistics of it, but you know, his passion, you know, and, and he, he, he dropped a few choice words and, and called some people out that I felt like I'm like, yeah, this is kind of what we're looking for. You know, it's not just a, you know, X's and O's type deal. It's not a, you know, a science type deal, but it was, it was an actual, like, you know, to the, to the level of, you know, you think you can teach toughness. You think you can talk tough and, and get that into kids. It's not going to happen. So, you know, I think, you know, his passion behind, you know, how he was coached and how he was coaching, you know, even his own sons and other people and, you know, kind of the quote macho stuff wasn't going to fly. So that'd probably be my favorite one. Awesome. And coach, we'd like to finish with something that, um, that we're learning or a way that we're growing. Certainly we like to think about the time that we're in right now with, with everything going on and everybody sort of uh, quarantined at different levels. Um, in the context of the last two or three weeks, what's something you've learned about yourself or a way that you've figured out, you know, I can do this and I can grow in this manner based on what we're going through right now? Yeah, I think this this time was was super easy for people, I think, to, to really start chasing, you know, chasing tales of a lot of different things. So for me, it was a chance to to kind of sit back and really think about what, what's essential and what's really important. So, you know, really getting back to faith, really getting back to, to family and my relationship with my wife has been huge, you know, and, and reaching out to, you know, my parents who, who are a little bit anxious during this time, you know, with obviously the, the age group that they're getting into and, and some of the people struggling. So, you know, really being able to get grounded back into that was awesome. And then I think the same thing with, with my coaching lifestyle you know, really getting back to the grassroots of what we do, you know, looking at programs like, you know, North Dakota State, looking at old school Nebraska, what made them successful, what made them really, really good. And I think getting into the weeds of that and really finding that those answers are, are quite simple, but then hard to implement. But I think, you know, putting that at the forefront of my mind as I move forward as a coach. Boy, you just barely got that. I think that's like 0.3 seconds right there. I don't even know what happens if it goes off. I think like the thing goes up. <laughs> Uh, I, I was actually kind of kind of curious to see what would happen myself. No, you're not the first uh, guest that's that's asked that, but everybody answers that question obviously slightly different. But one of the common threads the last week or so has been that it's all relative to time, and that's why we want to get back to work. There you have it. Five minutes, five questions, uh, no time wasted. Brady, thanks so much for being on. I really appreciate it. Anytime, Coach. Appreciate the time. May you guys always be moving an upward trajectory, and please make the most.